I'm with Toby Love from Share Love. Toby, what is Share Love? Well, Share Love International is a unique organization facilitating collaboration and cooperation in areas of faith diplomacy, business and trade, health and security, both food and water, between the nations of Africa and the state of Israel. When were you started and why we started? Well, unofficially, I've been doing this since my IDF service, since my military service in Israel, but in an official capacity since 2019. And you facilitate food security partnership. Tell us a bit about that. Well, I'm a strong believer in that the agribusiness is the present and the future of Africa, or at least one of its best perspectives. It's all about empowerment, and tomorrow's youth will only be empowered when they can feed themselves and feed their families and feed their communities. And I actually believe that's one of the greatest beauties of Africa. Is there a big need for what you're doing? I don't know if there's a big need for what I'm doing, but I feel like there's a deep calling from God. And it can only be seen as to how many people I'm able to make an impact on. Mm. I know that there is always a need for someone to be the facilitator, to be the bridge, to help communities understand each other. And this is just my part here, is really just bringing nations together and people together and communities together. Is it important to bring Israel and Africa together? Well, I know Israel and Africa will always be an integral part of each other. I'm sure you've heard this before, but Israel is the only nation to border the entire continent of Africa. And so just on that you know, geographical uh, level, you can see that there is really a platform here for interrelations and interconnectedness and fortunately unfortunately those lines have not been explored beyond the obvious diplomatic geopolitical lines and what we try to do is to bring it and make it a little bit more real and really have that impact between people between persons between organizations between companies nonprofits really have a base for communication and, and correspondence are jewish christian relations important to you Extremely, but not just for the sake of Israel. You know, I was born in Nigeria, and I feel like I should have given that a little bit of background as to why it is that I'm doing what I'm doing. So I was born in Nigeria to a Nigerian Christian mother and Jewish Israeli father. And I've been brought up in a home that recognizes, accepts both the Jewish and the Christian way of life, and both the African and the Israeli way of life. And I don't think it's just important for the sake of Israel because we see a lot of narratives of Israel trying to approach Africa in recent times. But when we can move from just a state of tolerance to an actual mutual respect and understanding, then that in itself would have ripple effects on so many other levels. So did you make Aliyah here to Israel? Well, I did. I made Aliyah upon completion of my secondary school studies in 2011, I think, 2008 that was. Uh, at the age of 16, by myself, just like every other normal person that is part Jewish would make Aliyah to Israel. And yeah. So was that scary, actually, coming to Israel all by yourself at 16 years of age? You know, it wasn't scary because, actually, I have been visiting Israel from the age of three every year for holidays. And so I had a sort of familiarity as to the environment into which I was coming. But nothing can ever prepare you for making, you know, that movement and that choice from what it is that you've been so used to for so long, for your, your entire childhood, and to be uprooted and, you know, out of choice, right? Uprooted and taken to a new place and having to learn not only the language, but the culture and the nuances and, and the history, which, you know, defines itself in, in the everyday behaviors and, and nuances. So, yeah, it, there was some challenges there, but I think I've come up on the other side and I've come up, you know, much, much more than I expected I could ever, you know, be in, in the country, in the States. So do you still have family in Nigeria? Well, of course, my parents haven't made Aliyah. They are still there, as well as my extended family from my mom's side. And it's very interesting because what it is that I do allows me to maintain those relations even till date and even expand them. Even though I'm so many thousand miles away, I still am able to expand on those relations and even deepen my, my identity as a Nigerian, even though I'm really far away from there. Does Israel have a good relationship with Africa? It depends on your definition of relationship. If you view a relationship as a lot of people do, which is a, in terms of interstate, right? 
as a transactional aspect, then yet, yes, there are numerous transactions. In fact, Israel is one of the states that has had the longest standing relationship with the nations of Africa among the Western powers. And when you talk about the diplomatic spheres, of course, you have all the diplomatic establishments that have been made. But if, Paul, you're speaking of human basic interconnectedness relationship, then I feel that that is a little bit void. Even today, those nations that Israel has a relationship with are somewhat still very much misunderstood and not really reflected in the right light within Israeli society. And that starts at the institutional level. So that starts in our schools, in our universities. And it would be so, you would be, you know, very interested to know that sometimes the very first meeting that most Israeli kids even adults have with Africa is through mainstream media, which really doesn't allow Africans much clout over their identities. And so I strongly believe there is a lot of place for improvement, a lot of place for building good relationships. And trust me, there are a lot of things that people can find as familiar topics with their counterparts across Africa. You enlisted in the IDF. Tell us a bit about that going into the army. Well, yes. The original purpose for me making Aliyah into Israel was to serve in the IDF. That was as per the wish of my dad, who, you know, growing up, he told me, listen, you can decide whatever university you're going to, whatever career you want, but there's just one thing that I'd like you to do for me, and that is to listen to the IDF. And even at such a young age, I think he really understood how much of an impact that would have on me as an individual, but me as a collective part of the Israeli society. And yes, I did serve a total of eight years, three active and five in reserve duty. And my experience in the IDF was overall positive, but it's many challenges from not speaking the language initially and not being offered the best opportunities to the tedious job requirements as well as the social aspects. But the interesting is that the lessons that I learned almost 10 years ago are so relevant to my everyday interactions today. And besides that, once you've served in the IDF, you gain understanding of the Israeli man site mm. and why they act as they do in many situations. Yeah. Is business today in your DNA? Oh, it's definitely in my DNA. You see, I come from a home where both parents are independent business people. And in fact, when I was growing up, my mom always used to remind me, Toby, you know, you're a fourth or fifth generation of an independent African woman. So I believe that from a very young age that was instilled into my mind that, you know, have a business sense of taking on the world. And that's not just not in business, but also in your relationships that you establish and everything. So I feel like it's only natural for me to be in this situation. But besides that, it's also being an entrepreneur. You listen, what, it, what I'm doing today, I'm not sure there are a lot of people who are in these spaces. And when I started this, I didn't have too many people that I could look up to and say, hey, an African woman, educated woman in Israeli society, you know, Christian, there are not that many people who occupy those kind of spaces. And so for me, the entrepreneurship spirit is what has allowed me to build so far. And there's a lot that I'm doing in the future, but so far what it is that I've done uh, up until now. And that just stems out from the kind of education that I received from my parents growing up from a very young age. Does your faith help you in this? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. Well, I have to always be in line with what God wants. Yeah. I have to put myself in this situation that, you know, I don't take a step. I don't do anything without consulting with God. I'm like, hey, you need to tell me what path I need to go. I'm not doing anything of my own, of my own decision, but what it is that you have for me in your line of work. And, you know, it's great because when what I do with faith diplomacy, especially... I have so many contacts with so many pastors around the world and so I'm able to tap into their knowledge and their guidance and their understanding of the word and our conversations are so great because we come to talk about a specific aim but then many pastors being pastors you know diverge into another topic but I always love those divergences because they allow me to again tap into their understanding of the word and let me see things maybe in the ways that I haven't seen. So I really have great teachers all over the world, and I'm telling you, all over the world. And uh, it's really a blessing for me. Uh, what is your prayer for the future of business between Africa and Israel? Well, my prayer, and hence the reason why I'm doing what it is that I'm going to do, what I'm doing is to achieve person-to-person -person relations and relatability. Business will come and will always come as a result 
a byproduct of good relations. And for those businesses to be established, we have to establish those relations first and foremost. And that comes from understanding, from, from dialogue, from just knowledge. And that is what we at Share Love International are trying to achieve. And what's your Facebook page, website for people who'd like to know more? Well, our Facebook is Share Love International and our website is shareloveintlinternational.org. And for anyone who's interested in being a part of what we're doing, we would love to welcome you on board. And, and that's it. Okay, Toby, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Paul, for having me and stay blessed for everything that you're doing.